Hello again guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're running what I guess you could loosely term is a bit of an experiment. Obviously with the advent of Microsoft Flight Simulator, the hobby in general has become a lot more popular recently. Of course this is great for flight simulation in general, having more fans of the genre. However, one of the knock-on side effects of this is that the peripherals market for flight simulation has gone a little bit crazy over the last few months. Prices for many peripherals have skyrocketed and it's actually quite hard to get hold of any in the first place. As a result, whether it's the aforementioned peripheral situation or people just coming to the hobby and not wanting to invest too much in equipment early on, many simmers now find themselves using a gamepad to control their aircraft within the sim. I know that for quite a few of my viewers this is the case and it got me wondering just how usable is a gamepad controller within a modern flight simulator. So in today's video we're going to run through a few scenarios to see how we go using a Microsoft Xbox game controller within Microsoft Flight Simulator. Scenario 1 will be flying a quick circuit in the Cessna 152. Scenario 2 will try and land the 747 into New York's John F. Kennedy Airport. And Scenario 3 will take a quick trip around the Mac loop in the Sim Skunk Works Fiat G91. I think between these three scenarios we should get a good feel for how the different types of aircraft handle within the sim and we should be able to get a good measure of what I can manage using an Xbox controller versus my usual setup. I do hope that you find the video informative and enjoyable. If you do please consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. If you have any comments or questions for me please leave them down in the comment section below. Thanks very much and I hope you enjoy the video. So we're currently on the ground at the Abu Road airstrip which is just out to the north of Ahmedabad, not too far off the western coast of India. As you can see we're sat in the Cessna 152, currently on the runway and we're ready to go. So we'll depart, we'll fly a quick lap around the airfield, just to get a feel for how the aircraft responds with the Xbox controller. Obviously flying circuit accurately does require some finesse on the controls, so I think it'll be a good test to see how we go with our Xbox controller. So the first thing we'll do, we'll remove the parking brake, using the controller as well for all the views in the uh, flight today. So park brake is off, we'll slowly come up on the throttle, so just tapping the A button on the controller to do that, and balancing that with the, uh, the rudder. A little bit fiddly to balance those as I need my uh, right hand to do both, a little bit tricky to do both at the same time, so really having to alternate. As you can see the rudder is quite uh, digital really in terms of how it responds, it's really all or nothing, just having to jab away at the trigger there. Anyway, aircraft's nice and straight now, we do have full power. 60 knots, coming back on the stick, the aircraft really wanting to get into the air of its own accord there. You can see it was quite an abrupt pull up on the stick there, the controls are incredibly sensitive I have to say. So just making very, very small inputs. Anyway, we're at 60 knots now, we'll climb away at 60 knots. On the runway heading up to 500 feet and then we'll turn on to our crosswind leg. Again just making very small inputs on the left joystick, trying to keep the aircraft level and maintaining our speed of 60 knots. Not having a uh, trim assigned on the controller I find it a little bit tricky as well. We're okay at the moment, we seem to be nicely trimmed for 60 knots but I think in the uh, downwind section that might become an issue. There's 500 feet so we'll start our turn onto crosswind. Trying to keep the turn as smooth as we can, that was actually reasonably easy. I think the aircraft in roll is a lot easier to control than it is in pitch. So just coming onto our uh, crosswind heading now, we'll level the aircraft back off. We'll take a quick look behind to see when we need to make our downwind turn. We can start our downwind turn now. Definitely feeling like the uh, the view is somewhat restricted, just having a joystick to control the viewing system. It does really make you miss track IR. So coming up on our downwind heading, rolling the aircraft back off straight and level, and approaching a thousand feet, so pitching down to maintain our altitude. Looking pretty good on the downwind there. Again, having to uh, put in lots of small abrupt control inputs to keep us straight and level. We'll come back off the power now. As I said, my guess will be that the aircraft won't really be trimmed for speed in the cruise. Obviously we could assign a button to the uh, trim, but I haven't done that currently. So downward checks, brakes are off, undercarriage is down, mixture's rich, 
fuel quantity is sufficient, instruments are checked, landing light is on and harness is secure. Turn base very shortly, just coming slightly right of our heading there. And we'll start our turn onto base now. Slightly overcorrecting on the view there. So coming back off the power. We're below the white arc, so we'll take a stage of flap. And we'll start descending as we join onto our uh, base leg. A little bit high here at the moment, so we'll come all the way back on the power. Take another stage of flap. Quick check on final. It's all clear. Again, much more tricky trying to fly the aircraft and manage the views at the same time. Obviously something like track IR is a lot more intuitive. Getting a little bit low here, so coming back up on the power. Start a uh, steady turnaround onto final. Take uh, full flap now. And again, coming back off the power. Certainly, you have to make a lot more control inputs using a uh, controller than you would with a uh, joystick and throttle setup. As you're basically constantly correcting. Okay, everything looking pretty reasonable. We might find that the aircraft floats quite a bit down the runway. We still have the uh, flaps bug that was introduced with the latest updates. A little bit of throttle, speed's good at the moment. I think the rudder control is going to be the trickiest part for the landing. Coming back off the throttle again. Try and keep the flare as smooth as we can. So flaring the aircraft, holding it off. A little bit jerky. A little bit to the left of the centre line, there's touchdown. And again using the uh, triggers to act as the rudder. Bringing the aircraft to a stop. So overall in the Cessna 152, I found that the controller, as I said, was very sensitive in pitch. Otherwise, though, the aircraft was reasonably easy to control. I also found the rudder controls to be a little bit less than optimal, and I think trying to land in a crosswind condition would be a little bit tricky. The other thing that I really noticed was just how much I missed track IR when having to go back to using a controller for the views. Overall, though, as you can see, we did manage to fly our circuit, and to a reasonably accurate degree. So I think that we'll say on this occasion that the Xbox controller was up to the task. Next we'll carry out the New York landing challenge, taking the 747-800 into John F. Kennedy Airport and see how the controller works out for us flying a heavy jet. So here we are in the cockpit of the 747-800, descending down the approach path for the uh, runway into New York. First thing we'll do, we'll take the gear down, so just using the uh, keyboard to do that. Getting a touch high here, so we'll come back off the thrust, keep the aircraft descending. We'll take flaps 25. And there's flaps 25, we'll take flaps 30. Keep the speed around 150 knots for the approach. Pappy's showing us slightly high at the moment, so we'll keep the uh, descent rate up. And again, come back on the thrust some more. I think the Pappy actually has a slight tendency to put us high as well for the touchdown zone, so we'll broadly disregard that if it's showing us as low. Let's check, we're stable. Reducing that descent rate now, coming back up on the thrust. Slightly to the left of the centre line at the moment, we do have a slight crosswind from the right. Speed's good, so we'll come back up on the thrust some more, still reducing that descent rate. Overall, I have to say the 747's much easier to fly with the uh, controller pad than the Cessna 152 was. Obviously the aircraft has a lot more weight, a lot more inertia to it, so we're not getting the abrupt movements that we, we were in the Cessna 152. Very difficult to see the uh, runway markings currently. Speed's getting a little bit high there, so coming back off the thrust. Still can't actually make out the touchdown zone yet. I think we're a little bit low now. Just bringing on some thrusts. 
Okay, I can see the touchdown zone now. All the way off the thrust. Yeah. Waiting for the touchdown. Slightly long. Full reverse. And using the rudder to keep the aircraft on the centre line. Again, the rudder very twitchy, and actually if you input full rudder, then the rudder just stops working altogether and you'll find yourself veering off the runway, so that's a little bit fiddly. Anyway, bring the aircraft to a stop, and we'll cancel the reverse. So overall, you can see that was good enough for 1.3 million points, which is actually a very competitive score. On the leaderboard, that puts us at 1,891, which again, not... Uh, by any means a uh, blinding score but very competitive I would imagine there's many uh, thousands if not tens of thousands of people that did the landing challenge so it is possible to fly the 747 to a reasonably accurate degree using the controller. As you can see the only thing that really let us down there was our ground roll and as I say I do find the rudder inputs to be one of the trickiest things with a controller the way that it's set up within the sim. So overall, as I said, I think that the Xbox controller actually works very nicely for flying the heavier jets like the 747, although the pitch axis is still a little bit sensitive. With the increased weight and inertia of the aircraft, you don't tend to get the jerky emotions like we had in the Cessna 152. As you can see, we managed a reasonably competitive score as well with the landing challenge. And as I mentioned, with a jet like the 747, you're generally going to be flying the aircraft on autopilot most of the time anyway. So you only really need the controller for the takeoff and the landing which of course makes it far less integral to the whole experience than when flying something like the Cessna 152. Lastly, for what I think will be a really good overall test of the Xbox gamepad, we're going to take a trip around the Mac loop in the Sim Skunk Works Fiat G91. Lastly, but by no means least, our final test with the Xbox controller in today's video, we'll be running a quick lap around the Mac loop using the excellent Sim Skunk Works Fiat G91. As you can see, we're just approaching the town of Machenkleth right now. We'll come up to full power. And I have to say, the first thing I noticed with this aircraft is it's very twitchy using a uh, joystick, but I have to say, it's still entirely possible. Anyway, passing over the town of Machenkleth now, so following the river down the valley. Pointing the aircraft out towards the hills. We'll try and get as low as we can throughout the run. And I think the trickiest part here is going to be the uh, view system. I think it's going to make things quite tricky not being able to quickly and instantaneously look in any one direction as we make some of the turns through the hills. Now as I say, passing down the uh, valley, passing over the bridge. There's the town of Glantwimmin just off on our right. Make our turn now out towards the north, heading towards the town of Dinas Malthui. Again, in pitch the aircraft is really, really sensitive, which uh, does make things a little bit tricky in terms of flying low level. In terms of roll, it's not too bad. Pointing the aircraft out the hill for now, following the A470. And continuing to follow that river. Just see the town of Dias Malthui now, off at our 11 o'clock. Starting the left turn out towards Bulch. We'll hug the hill as we make the turn. In roll the aircraft is actually pretty nice to fly with the joystick. So it just seems that all the aircraft are quite oversensitive in pitch using an Xbox controller. Which to be fair is probably quite uh, amendable using the sensitivity settings in the controller setup menu. Everything I'm using here is default. Rolling the aircraft back round to the right, banking ready for the turn through Bulsh. Up over the crest of the hill, reversing the turn back round to the left. Continuing to follow the A470 out towards the Cross Foxes Inn. And again, usually right now I'd be looking up over the canopy, lining up the next turn down towards Shin Min Gil, but it's much trickier to do with the joystick. Following the A487 now down towards the lake. The aircraft wanting to uh, pitch up naturally at high speed, so ideally we'd want to trim that out, but again with the controller. I haven't got any buttons set up to do that right now. There's the lake, so just coming up on Chorus Corner, making our turn out to the left through Chorus. And continuing to follow the contours of the valley out towards the town of Chorus. Now 
There's Chorus just down below us. And we'll now loosely exit the valley back towards the town of Machuntleth. Again, very sensitive in pitch there, as you can see. In terms of roll, the aircraft, pretty nice to uh, handle. Even the slightest uh, pitch change is uh, very aggressive on the elevator movement. But again, as you can see overall, we can control the aircraft to a uh, reasonable degree using the Xbox controller. So there you go guys, I do hope you enjoyed our three little test scenarios run in Microsoft Flight Simulator using the Xbox Gamepad controller. Overall I have to say that I was actually pleasantly surprised with just how accessible the sim is using the gamepad. It certainly has its issues and it's certainly less preferable to using a full peripheral setup. But overall as you can see from the three videos we were able to control the aircraft in a pretty decent fashion. For me the Xbox controller was definitely weaker for the smaller and more agile aircraft particularly in pitch. As we could see with both the Cessna 152 and the Fiat G91, in pitch the controls were very sensitive leading to very jerky motions of the aircraft. In roll all three aircraft performed quite nicely and as I mentioned particularly the 747 was actually pretty easy to fly using the Xbox controller. Once again I'm sure that the pitch controls could be made less sensitive using the controller sensitivity settings within the sim and with a little bit of tweaking you could probably get it to the point where the controller handles the aircraft quite nicely. And of course, in my case, a little bit more practice might have gone a long way as well. Rudder control with the Xbox gamepad I did find to be a little bit of an issue. It felt very digital in nature, even though the triggers on the controller seem to be analog. Also, as I mentioned, at full rudder deflection, the rudder doesn't actually work in sim, so you have to build up a little bit of muscle memory to make sure you don't put in any full rudder inputs. Also, as I mentioned, we used a completely default controller setup today within the sim, Personally, I would probably change some of the uh, key bindings there slightly for a more optimal setup. For example, I definitely want to assign an elevator trim control to the gamepad. Overall though, I suppose there's two questions that we're really trying to answer here. One, is it actually possible to control the aircraft to a reasonably decent degree using a gamepad? And two, would there be any particular learning value in terms of actually learning how to fly an aircraft using the gamepad? For me, the answer to question one is generally a resounding yes. It's not ideal, but I think we've proven here that it is perfectly possible to control an aircraft using a gamepad. For question two, of course you're not going to learn exactly how an aircraft feels to fly by using a gamepad, but I do still think it offers a good starting point, again if you're not looking to spend lots of money on peripherals early on, or perhaps at the moment you're unable to get hold of your chosen peripheral. For what it's worth, I used a gamepad for about the first two years of my flight simulation time. And whilst again you aren't going to learn specifically about how the controls feel in terms of muscle memory, it is enough to get you started and to start learning the principles of how the aircraft operates. As I mentioned during our 747 landing, particularly for the heavy jets, you're obviously going to be flying on autopilot most of the time. And when you are flying the aircraft manually, generally you'll be making very small control inputs anyway. So my overall conclusion is that whilst of course any sort of a joystick would probably be preferable over a gamepad, I do think that overall as an intermediary step, or perhaps for someone who's a fairly casual simmer, a controller like the Xbox Gamepad actually offers a very decent and cost-effective option for controlling your aircraft in the sim. Lastly, I thought it would be useful to give you my ideal controller sensitivity settings for the Xbox controller gamepad, as well as a list of buttons that I would assign were I using a gamepad within the sim. Anyway guys, once again I do hope that you enjoyed the video and found it to be of use. If you did, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. If you have any comments or questions for me, please leave them down in the comments section below and I'll always do my best to answer them. But for now, thanks very much and I'll see you all again soon.